as far as the helmets and equipment goes, one, you nailed it when you mentioned if uh, do helmets give you a false sense of security. One of my recommendations to Dr. Ellen Bogan, after two and a half pages, the last one I gave him, I said, this is one that will never fly. I said, you want to protect guys' heads? Get rid of helmets. Every single play they teach you, whether you're blocking or tackling, you bow your neck and you stick your face, stick your face through the numbers. Okay, the, you, when you block, aim for the crack of the neck, stick your face, it, it, it's, it's the, the human brain wasn't, been, wasn't meant to be used as a weapon, and that's exactly what it is. Now, you go back to the old days with the leather helmets and all that stuff. People go, oh, you know, they were so much tougher. They didn't tackle that. It was all shoulder tackling, blo uh, shoulder blocking. It wasn't this every play you led with your head. And then, and, and studies have shown, it doesn't have to be the concussions that cause the problem. It's the, it's the repeated sub-concussive hits. A typical, you know, Pop Warner player may have 1,200, 1,500, whatever it is, uh, uh, 2,000 sub-concussive hits in a year. Well, what, a 10-year-old kid, you know, would you let your kid bang his head against the wall? Just just tap it for 1,200 times? I mean, really. But it's a lot harder than the taps, and they've also put accelerometers in these kids' helmets now, and they're finding out they're generating the same G-force as the guys in the NFL do on some hits. So. Um, there, there's a number of ways it, from changing equipment, uh, changing the culture of the game, you know, um, uh, rule changes. Uh, it all needs to come into play or um, at the rate it's going, it's not going to be around much longer. The liability is going to be too great for anyone to fill the team.